on, Rooster. You got him. Drop down and take the shot. It's too low. Too late. You had your chance. That's a kill. Knocked it off. So at this point, we've all seen one. The Cobra Manoeuvre, or Pugachev's Cobra, named for the man that popularised it in the public eye, is one of the most famous aerobatic manoeuvres seen at air shows. But is there a reason we don't really see it in dogfights, seldom as they are IRL these days? And should I want to, how would I go about pulling one in War Thunder? Well, I'm here to answer those questions. But to truly understand what the Cobra is and how it came to be, I'm going to need to give a bit of a history lesson. Our story starts in early 1960, as the Saab 35 Draken enters frontline service with the Swedish Air Force. Now, the Draken is a curious design. This baby is a double delta wing, which combines the high speed performance of a typical delta, such as that found on Mirage 3, but with good low speed performance, something Mirage 3 or its later developments weren't known for. But our friend the Draken has a few aerodynamic idiosyncrasies that were quickly discovered upon its entry into service. Not only was it difficult to land due to the then unproven nature of its design, but it also had the tendency to enter a deep stall, also known as a super stall, which, put simply, is a type of stall affecting aircraft with certain control surface layouts, so that after turbulent airflow detaches from the wing, it affects the usability of the horizontal stabiliser and any control surfaces mounted there. This type of stall is incredibly difficult to recover from in conventional aircraft designs, and led to a lot of pilot deaths in the Dragon's early years. I'll link a video on the website that explains this concept in more detail down below. J-35 pilots were given training to counter these stalls, when entering a super stall, the pilots were taught to push forward on the stick, pulling negative alpha. This manoeuvre, as you can probably guess, had the dramatic effect on the aircraft's speed, which was quickly noticed by pilots and they started using it to not only bleed speed, but also to force overshoots in dogfights. Nicknamed Court Parade, or Short Parry, the manoeuvre was later compared to the Harrier using its thrust vectoring to trick the enemy into an overshoot. If properly applied, it could tip the scale in the Draken's favour. If not, you were a sitting duck left floating in the air, an easy shot, but we'll get back to this later. Over the course of its service, the Swedish Drakens had occasional encounters with Soviet aircraft over the Baltic Sea. As these confrontations often go, even today, they devolved into non-combat dogfights, both playful and or threatening. The Cobra caught the Soviets by surprise, and was later used by Swedish pilots training in mock fights against the new Saab 37 Viggen, which wasn't able to pull these high alpha manoeuvres, and it caught the Viggen pilots off guard as well. But on the other side of the world in the late 1960s, a Syrian MiG-21 pilot named Mohammed Mansour inadvertently developed the same manoeuvre when developing defensive tactics for use by his squadron. In a high alpha pull, he pitched too hard and his aircraft stopped in midair. Mansour instinctively activated the afterburner and managed to recover. He then tried the same tactic later in control conditions, and the Cobra was reborn in the Middle East. Anecdotal evidence also suggests it may have been used in a dogfight during the Yom Kippur War, but my research shows this is just anecdotal. But Phantom, everyone else says this manoeuvre came from Russia. What are you going on about? I'm getting there, I'm getting there. This is Igor Valk. He was a Soviet test pilot and cosmonaut who was well known for his outstanding abilities in testing aircraft at critical angles of attack, as well as performing aerobatic moves like the Cobra. And this is Viktor Pugachev, a man whose name you've maybe heard before. This is a man who, with the entire world watching at the 1989 Paris Air Show, had this to say. This is where the Cobra caught the public's eye. It's already 29 year history remaining unknown to a vast amount of people even to this day. Today, the Cobra remains a popular maneuver at air shows, mesmerising young wannabe pilots, as let's be honest here, that thing looks really cool, right? Just wait till you see the J-turn that the F-22 can pull. <laughs> Now 
No, not that one! But Raptor isn't why we're here, so let's talk War Thunder. Mig Flug says it best. The Cobra maneuver is a demanding aerobatics maneuver in which an aircraft flown at a moderate speed suddenly raises its nose to the vertical position and beyond before dropping the nose back to horizontal flight. The aircraft reaches 90 to 120 degrees angle of attack during the Cobra. But saying that is one thing. Where'd they put that diagram? Here we have a flanker. We can see it pull up quickly, almost to stationary for a couple seconds, before pitching down into forward flight again. Seems fairly simple, huh? So here's a few examples of me trying to perform a Cobra in the J-35. As you can see, I'm not the best with it. My excuse being that it's not something I'm often asked to do, and I'm not a very experienced Draken pilot. So instead I'll explain what I'm trying to do, a bit of luck there will be some footage from someone who does know what they're doing, pulling a far better example to show you what I'm trying to explain. So, you can see I'm not supersonic, this is because of control lockup. The faster we go, the more air flows over our control surfaces. Have you ever noticed that your controls become less effective when you're at higher speeds or in a dive? That's control lockup. The control surfaces become hard to use due to the high amount of air flowing over them. If we're going to pull a Cobra, it needs to be at medium air speeds, maximum 900 km an hour to maximise the AOA you can pull. So what am I actually doing, or attempting to do, in the clips? Before I even start pulling the manoeuvre, I'm switching my control mode. This can be done by setting a binding controls, aircraft, controls mode, called toggle control mode. This allows you to cycle the various control modes that exist within the game, and in this case we're cycling to full real controls, which gives us complete control of the aircraft's control surfaces, and removes that pesky instructor so it doesn't interfere with the manoeuvre we're about to pull. Once that's done we're in full real controls, you can then pull back hard on the stick and pull the manoeuvre. As for why mine isn't that impressive and falls off to the side, for some reason the pitch control wasn't working, so I had to use the pitch axis keys I have on my mouse for full deflection. That pull to the side is me not being able to multitask, your mileage may vary. Once you've pulled up, go full negative elevator and you can re-enter forward flight. Remember to cycle your controls again to set mouse aim, otherwise you may have a bad time further into the dogfight. Remember to check your positioning and your surroundings before and after. You really don't want to get jumped by a third party when doing this. This is the controversial part. I've talked previously about the importance of energy retention in dogfight, especially those involving jet aircraft. We know the rules here. Energy is life. Don't throw it away. Makes it sound a lot like a lightsaber, doesn't it? But Phantom, what could possibly be wrong with pulling this sort of thing to a force an overshoot? This sounds like the edge I've been needing to win a fight with Gaima 6. Well, you see. And brace yourself, as I'm going to get a tad technical here. In air combat, and War Thunder especially, we have different ranges and angles where certain types of weapons are most effective. For example, and I'm generalising here, at around 2-3km to three kilometers, we use the short ranges, or IR missiles. Beyond that, we can use the Star H, Fox 1. Below 1km, we go to guns. Now, reaction times are pretty quick when it comes to War Thunder. I mean, look how close this was. No, he doesn't. Alright, I've got a 6. He's glanced. He just destroyed the base. Come on, Sean. I've got a 104 behind me. Splash one. You get him? No, I got uh, an F3H that took me head on. This means that the only sort of range this manoeuvre would be effective at is incredibly short. Roughly 200 to 300 metres if I were to make an educated guess. We don't have the luxury of those Draken pilots we talked about earlier. The guys we're dogfighting are trying very hard to blow us out the sky. And if we go and pull a Cobra, or similar high alpha pull, to try and force an overshoot, there is an incredibly high chance the enemy will get a shot and unload their guns into our aircraft. One thing that should always be kept in mind is that War Thunder isn't always fought as 1v1s. In RRB especially, you are incredibly vulnerable to being third party in dogfights, which means that if you suddenly dump all your speed to force an overshoot, you are going to be defensive as you may well get jumped after you've recovered and are getting your energy back. Not to mention that you are a much larger target when you pull that manoeuvre as you're presenting the top side of your aircraft instead of the tail. If you pull this at the wrong range, you're essentially giving your opponent a shot, which is the exact thing you would be trying to avoid. What I'm trying to say 
is that there are defensive options outside the Cobra that you should look to use in War Thunder. The way aircraft perform in game is very different to real life, which means that we can use tactics that real pilots wouldn't be able to get away with. So keep that in mind when playing defensive. Don't default to a Cobra, it's very likely to get you killed. The Cobra maneuver is a maneuver with a rich history behind it, which I feel definitely has more of a place at air shows than it does in the modern dogfight, which are rare enough. But don't get me wrong, I think they're cool as hell. Just remember, epic as they are to watch, if I see you pull one against me in dogfight, I will shoot you down. Thank you for watching.